Sally Steele and welcome to my show. Today's show is the first of my very special two-part episode of my Alice Cooper interview sessions, never heard before. And I know you're going to love it because Alice is always the best guest ever. Alice talks about how he came up with the name of the band Alice Cooper, why they were banned from England, the scariest show he ever did, and the crazy accidents that happened on stage. I've had the great pleasure of getting to know Alice Cooper over the years after I started my magazine, Vegas Rocks Magazine. I first met Alice when I was a limousine driver and I was actually asking him questions driving a hundred miles an hour while I was looking in the back seat. This first interview is one I did just after I started my magazine and it's a great interview. You're gonna love it. So. Here's Alice. Hey, Sally. Hey, how you doing, Alice? I'm doing great. The question is, does Vegas rock? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, Since I does. started this magazine, I'll tell you. Actually, you were uh, kind of my inspiration to start it. Uh, I was a limousine driver for four years, and I drove you about... Uh, are you the blonde girl? Yes. Okay, I know who you are. <laughs> okay, you don't sound very happy about that, but... No, no, I, no, no. It was great. I loved interviewing you so much. It's like, you know, I should be doing this for a living, and, <laughs> you know, so fate you came... Did you start the magazine then? I did. I started about a year, a little over a year ago, and it's oh, like, great. it's very popular here. I'm going to give you a copy when I see you when okay, you come to great. town. Yeah, we'll be in there um, uh, in October. Yeah, I, I know that's the gig that I'm here to promote. I'm going to put you on the front cover of the October issue. Oh, that's great. So uh, some of the things I, I didn't cover, <laughs> you probably thought I asked you everything during that drive. Uh -huh. but, um, my understanding is that your father was a, a minister, is that yeah. right? Uh -huh. Now, what was his reaction when he found out his son was wearing makeup and played in a rock band? And my, dad, my dad was, very, uh, was a very cool guy, very hip guy. Mm -hmm. My dad, you know, was uh, he was a very um, learned uh, and a great preacher, and he had no problem with rock and roll. It didn't bother him at all when you started wearing makeup? No, it wasn't that, because he knew my sense of humor. And he understood who Alice Cooper was, that, that it was a, a, a character that I was building, that I was going to, you know, at that time also there was no alcohol involved, really, mm -hmm. and there was no... Uh, real sexual connotation to the whole thing it mm -hmm. was much more innocent when when uh when we first started the whole thing mm -hmm. and i don't think anybody expected it to get to the place where it got mm -hmm. as far as the uh, how big it was did him being a minister did that kind of uh, make you want to rebel because no, my dad my dad and i were great friends mm -hmm. i really never rebelled against my uh against my dad Mm -hmm. uh, I was always much more of, I looked around and saw what was going on and rebelled against that. Mm -hmm. In other words, I rebelled against the hippie movement. I rebelled against the disco movement. I rebelled, I, I tried to create a character that didn't really, had, that wasn't really uh, compatible mm -hmm. with all those things. And that's where Alice was born. Alice was sort of born this, this character that, that didn't fit in. Well, well, who were your influences to, like, make you, uh, you know, I want to be rock and roll and different than them? Well, for one thing, we started out just being a regular rock and roll band. I mean, we started out learning Beatles and Rolling Stones and Yardbirds and The Who, all those bands. When we got into the whole thing of competition with Led Zeppelin and, and groups like that, we realized that the only way to compete is to not do what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And even though musically, if you take Led Zeppelin and Alice Cooper and ACDC and the Rolling Stones and the Scorpions and every other hard rock band and, and put them all together and take away the image, take away the look, take away the names, all of those bands are very similar. Mm -hmm. I mean, we play, we could play anything Aerosmith could play. Aerosmith could play anything we could play. Uh, we could all play Rolling Stone songs. We could all play Beatles songs. Now, what it what really was was, we were all good rock and roll bands. Now, what direction were we going to take it? Mm -hmm. Our direction was, look at all of the safe bands around the world. Let's be the most unsafe band. Mm -hmm. You know, let's be the band that's not the heroes. Let's be the villains. Uh huh. Let's let's not uh, let's let's delve into horror. 
let's delve into comedy and horror together. Uh-huh. Let's do, uh, let's have, you know, I mean, it wasn't hard for me to have a, a black sense of humor. Mm-hmm. I had a very dark sense of humor, maybe the same way that Monty Python did, mm-hmm. where you're not allowed to really laugh about certain things, but they're just funny. Who, who, came, up w- who came up with the name? How'd you guys come uh, up with we that? Did, we just came up with a name that I thought would fit that image. Uh-huh. You know, when you come up with a name, we could have come up with Black Sabbath or, you know, a Dark the dark lords or anything like that and i thought you know let's go the other way Mm -hmm. what if we looked like this horrific band but our name was very soft Mm -hmm. and our name was very sort of like haunting if if i heard the name alice cooper i would think of some old woman that lived in an old house Mm -hmm. you know and that's what i wanted alice the alice character to be kind of thought of as something really kind of creepy like that at the same time the look of Alice Cooper was much more influenced by, there was a movie called Barbarella. Uh-huh, Jane Fonda. When we saw the Black Queen, she was all in black leather and she had switchblades coming out of her wrists and things like that. And I said, that's what Alice Cooper should look like. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so it was a combination of maybe all of that and also the idea that Alice should also be the sheriff of Nottingham and he should be Captain Hook and he should be Jack the Ripper. And he should be all of these villains rolled up into one. Mm-hmm. But of course, the thing that the only thing that'll make that work is the songs. Right. You really have to write great songs to make that work. Mm-hmm. What were you doing? Uh, what were you going to be before you got into rock music? Well, my dad was a also he was a pastor, but he was also a an electronics engineer. He was an artist. He was a um, you know he was a graphic artist and. Uh, I probably would have been doing that. I, 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 was, uh, I was a major in art in college, even though I probably would have been really, really good at advertising. Oh, I have a job for you now. <laughs> well, I mean, it was the kind of thing where, like, I would look at what was going on in advertising, and I always had a funny idea about how to sell things. Uh-huh. And so, you know, when it came to selling Alice Cooper, we used to do our own promotions we used to do our own ads we would do all of our own album covers we would do all of our own artwork things like that because we had a different sense of humor than the record company did mm-hmm. well you're a marketing genius well from and it's everything i could was see something that i was really good at yeah. I, did, I wasn't good at business i was good at marketing mm-hmm. i could take a band you know that was a band that nobody wanted to hear and i think i could find something in that band that would make people really curious about them Mm-hmm. And it's just you know you, all you really want to do is sort of throw out that little that little something to the audience where they have to go what what do you mean I don't get that mm-hmm. you know, and then they're then they're curious about the band right right the last time we talked uh, you you hadn't met Marilyn Manson have you met him yet no do you, do you think Still that haven't he... met him. we don't run in the same circles obviously <laughs> do you, uh, you know, he's I've not never, playing golf I've gone. never gone into L A and said hey look up Marilyn Manson well, for me. Do you think? Do you feel like he copied you? Oh, I I think that it, that he admits that that was something that was a big influence for him. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, we don't do the same kind of stuff, really. I mean, his is much more industrial kind of rock. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really look at Marilyn Manson's band as being a hard rock band. Hey, kind of you've like heard his music, then? Oh yeah. Sure do you, Do you like it? Yeah, I think, actually, I like a lot of his songs. Mm-hmm. Well, when you two I get don't agree with a lot of his songs, but I like a lot of his songs. Mm-hmm. Well, when you two get together, I need to be there for a photo op. Well, okay, that would be, I think that's the one that Rolling Stone's <laughs> going to want to do, too. <laughs> oh, I'll have to bribe somebody. Uh, tell me the craziest thing that happened to you guys in your career in the early Alice Cooper days, or funniest well, you event? Know, the entire career was pretty insane. Just one you clean know. event. Can you I think of I would say any time that... Any time that you get banned in England before anybody's ever seen you in England, you know, I mean, just... Well, during just what tour urban, was that? Just from the urban legend, 1970, 71, mm-hmm. you know, uh, England had heard about Alice Cooper. They had heard all the legendary stories about Alice Cooper. Mm-hmm. And before we ever set a foot in the country, we were banned. <laughs> and that was a very big part of our career. Yeah, that, that was very important to the audience that Alice was so horrific that he got banned in England. And believe me, that, that launched our career. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and you know the Sex Pistols took a note from that. Mm-hmm. You know when when the Sex Pistols came to America, what did they do? They didn't go to New York or L.A. They went to Texas. Mm-hmm. And they played in cowboy bars. Well, why would they do that? Well, because they're going to get killed over there, and it's going to make the papers every night. Their okay. manager was smart enough to make sure they were in the wrong place. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's a method to the madness of rock and roll. Yeah. So, it, no, cr- nothing really... What about, like, some of the tricks you did? Was there ever any scary things, like, when you were being, you know... Well, you could never try. I mean, snakes do things you're not expecting them to do. Uh, mm-hmm. Guillotines do things you're not expecting them to do. Uh, you know, audiences do things you're not expecting them to do. I mean, when you cut, there's probably a, a 500 page book of things that went wrong that were funny. Uh-huh. And, you know, stuff that maybe at the time didn't seem funny, but uh, two weeks later you would look at that and go, gee, that really was funny. As far as. You know, the, fact that the fact that the noose broke one night when I'm, you know, when they're hanging me. And that's not funny. Yeah. Until about two weeks later. Right. And then you start finding it very funny. Uh huh. You know, there were a lot of spinal tap moments. Mm-hmm. I think in, uh, in any time that you do theatrics, there's a very there's a lot of moments where that those spinal tap things can happen. Those uh, those ridiculous things that you think only happen in movies. Well, they actually do happen. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like the snake will decide to. Uh, to relieve itself on stage, right in the middle of the show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you never think about that ever happening, but it did. What did you do when that happened? You just let it happen? You just let it happen. Or did you take no, it off stage? There's no way of telling that snake that he can't defecate on stage. Did you finish the song? Or you oh, didn't? yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. In fact, uh, I was covered in it. The, uh, the stage was covered in it. <laughs> the audience was, it was smelled so bad that the audience was sick. <laughs> You know, I mean, it was just one of those things where, and, and you could never get it to do it again, but it just happened to be that one night on stage when the, when the snake decided that was going to be, he's going to let loose. Yeah. Was that the one named Alice? This uh, no, I don't mm-hmm. even remember what that snake's name oh. is. Every, we have a different snake for every show. Oh, okay. I mean, for every tour. What, what, what's the scariest uh, thing at Sandy Mine, like a crazed fan? Besides well, the one driving. Like a crazed fan, like, uh, probably, maybe the scariest thing was playing, um, we played Sao Paulo, Brazil, and uh, in Sao Paulo, Brazil, we had 158,000 people indoors, and that's the biggest, the Guinness Book of Records, biggest indoor audience of all time. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, there were like, at the press conference, there were 30,000 people trying to get in the press conference. Mm-hmm. There were like three people killed at the press conference. Mm-hmm. Because in South America, life is very cheap. Right. You know, people get stabbed, people get uh, thrown under cars. How long ago was this? This was in 1973, 74, I think it was. Uh-huh. Um, and we weren't used to life being so treated so cheaply. Mm-hmm. You know, in America, uh, it's a different thing. Life has got maybe more precious than it is down there. But the fact that we get done with the press conference and left, and somebody says there were three people killed at the press conference. And we go, what? Mm-hmm. And they said, well, there were four babies born at the press conference, too. <laughs> wow. Um, I think that was our alarm right there. Oh, was that the, the 10 minutes are up? Yeah, it's a bad idea. It was more like 12 or 13. Well, that's great. Well, hopefully I'll see you and talk to Shep, and maybe I can get a picture with you when, yeah, you, come no to, at all. when you come to town. I'll thanks so we'll much. There. You know, we'll be there, like I said, the, near the end of the month. Okay, thanks for taking time for, to call me today. All right, good to talk to you again. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Okay, bye. Thank you for tuning in. We will see you right here next week. Don't forget to subscribe, and we will see you on the streets of rock and roll.